Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode of InfoSec Fusion with Gaurav Batra. Today the episode is very special, we are doing it in association with CXO Junction and Infoblox. Infoblox is the leader in cloud first networking and cyber security services and from Infoblox we have joining us Kanaya Vasani. Uh, he is Executive Vice President Product and Corporate Development with Infoblox. Uh, hello Kanaya, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you Gaurav, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure of mine to have you here and you know the person like uh, having a great experience in the industry and I, have, I think you started your career when the network used to be traditional. And so uh, to, I will definitely like to know your journey because we are talking about InfoSec Tales. So what was most astonishing part for you when you have seen the transformation from traditional network to the app based network? Right, right. So I have been in this business for a very long time. Uh, I started uh, doing networking in the early 90s uh, when this whole TCP IP uh, revolution was just happening, the whole internet protocol and IP based networking was just taking off. Um, did a lot of work, built some of the early routers in the industry, uh, moved on to the telco side of the house, uh, did a lot of the broadband networks, uh, consumer broadband, business broadband, DSL, cable modem, metro ethernet, digital <laughs> video. So I, I've been around the block. Uh, and then in 2006, I joined Juniper again. So for me, it was coming a full circle and coming back to, uh, to my routing roots. Um, and the world had changed. The world had changed completely. We were, networking was the lifeblood of everything we did. Scale was huge. We are talking about gigabits, terabits, petabytes of data. Um, so how do you operate in, a, in, in an environment where you, the entire world runs on, on networks? And then I came to Infoblox, and uh, Infoblox provides all the core network services that sit behind the networks that we all use. Mm -hmm. uh, and had an opportunity to look at networking from, a, from, a, from an enabling technology, from, from the core network services that enable networking uh, perspective. A, a lot has changed. Networking has moved from this transport mindset to an application aware networking mindset, right? Uh, because we are using the cloud in a big way now. We have moved from this on-prem data center centric architecture to a cloud to edge architecture where the edge is you or me sitting and working from home. Yeah. And that has had massive implications on how we as an industry should think about networking and security. Uh, on-prem solutions, which was, hey, we used to deploy purpose-built hardware, small, medium, large, extra-large boxes. Well, that will give way to networking being consumed as a service, security being consumed as a service, uh, uh, security as a service, network as a service paradigm. Uh, moving from a scale-up architecture to a scale-out architecture, yeah. right? Bringing the, the whole cloud-native principles of microservices and scaling elastic scaling to networking and security as well. Um, and then uh, finally, a big shift in terms of moving from a transport mindset to what I would call a context aware uh, networking mindset. So instead of making decisions in the network based on you know, IP addresses and ports, you need to understand the context of what's happening in the network. So who is the user? What is the device the user is coming from? Is the device compliant from a security profile standpoint? What application the user is trying to get to? And based on this knowledge, figuring out what's the right chain of network and security services you need to spin up to provide this user a secure mm -hmm. and compelling user experience. So I think it's a big, big shift. It's a massive shift in terms of how uh, the industry has evolved. Yeah, exactly. And I think you have touched the right point, the context-based uh, networking. And when we uh, talk about that, I think uh, we had a previous discussion about the DDI as well and uh, uh, in Infoblox you are doing a lot of uh, good work in the DDI space. How you think the DDI is the key element for the network modernization? Absolutely. No. So when I talk about context-based networking, right, I'm talking about awareness of the identity of the device in the network, identity of the user associated with that device, the application the user is trying to get to. All that information today sits in your DDI infrastructure. And DDI stands for DNS, DHCP, and IP address management. So what we are finding is as the network gets into, into this more, uh, transforms into a more context-aware network, DDI becomes 
a, a foundational and enabling technology for that, for, for this network. So think about a hybrid multi-cloud network. Right? You want to deploy VMs on the fly. You want to have microservices and containers spin up on the fly. Well, your workflows around IP address assignment, IP address reclamation, IP address reassignment need to get automated. Uh, your DNS records, if these applications are public-facing applications, you have DNS records around these applications. Uh, they need to be automated. The, the management of these DNS records has to be automated. So it becomes, a it becomes a foundational element of the control, network control fabric that you are building in this new hybrid multi-cloud uh, network. Visibility, we talked at length earlier today with uh, several CISOs. Uh, from some of the leading uh, uh, companies in, in Mumbai. Visibility was the number one pain point uh, they talked about. Yes. So DDI really gives you comprehensive and pervasive visibility into everything that happens in your network because you assign IP addresses through DDI. You know everything that sits on the network. Uh, through DNS, you know every endpoint and every user and what they are trying to communicate with. So full visibility into everything that happens from a communication standpoint. And then the third element is providing a layer of foundational security because once you have visibility, you can decide what's normal versus what's, what's abnormal. Yep. So that brings the whole notion of security into play uh, from uh, using DDI as a foundational layer. Yeah, I think uh, when we talk about DDI, the core component is, of course, the DNS security and uh, that is required as a foundational security. But the challenge which I see or when I talk to my peers, that they already have so many security tools. They already have, uh, you know, uh, XDR, EDR, MDR, then a lot of uh, other technologies they are putting in together, SOC and different tools. So putting up another uh, tool or a product for DNS security and putting up another investment, how you think uh, that justifies and uh, how DNS security can actually get us a return on investment? See, I think the, the biggest challenge we have had with our industry is the networking community doesn't talk to the security community, <laughs> right? Yeah. So security comes in and says, look, networking is all plumbing and infrastructure and I have to build a, a security wrapper around my network infrastructure. Uh, what needs to change is that mindset. You need to think about networking from a layered architecture perspective. So if you have deployed DDI in your network infrastructure, don't think of DDI as just a networking tool. Okay. Think of DDI as your security fabric as well. Because the first thing a security person wants is visibility. Well, DDI gives you pervasive visibility. If you start to then use uh, DDI as a means or DNS as a means to flag potential malicious activity in your infrastructure and filter out as much of that malicious activity. The malware CNC communication leverages, 95% of malware leverages DNS to try and figure out where their CNC server is. Through DNS, you can filter out that malware CNC communication, which means you are now bringing security much earlier in the, the, the cyber kill chain. To your question, Gaurav, around hey, now is, here's one more security tool. This is infrastructure that already is in your network. You are not deploying any new infrastructure. You are merely turning on some security capabilities in your DDI infrastructure. So the whole goal here is to leverage what you already have mm. to make your overall security infrastructure more effective uh, and more efficient. Uh, we also heard a lot about automation today, right? Because yeah. uh, you know every security device will throw a bunch of alerts. Well, the, what we do with Infoblox is we integrate with every network security, uh, network operations platform you have, mm -hmm. uh, network orchestration platform, okay. and from a security standpoint, we integrate with all the security solutions out there. So it's not about throwing more alerts, but ta taking this data and feeding it into the rest of the security stack, whether it's your NAC systems, your endpoint systems, your, uh, your SIM and SOAR platforms as well. So Great. play nice and, 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 and integrate with everyone. Yeah. Sounds good and I think I would like to take the point which where you mentioned uh, network guys are not talking to the security guys and uh, sometimes you know it's a challenge you bring the network optimization as well as the security and bringing it together is a great point. Any Anything from the Infoblox standpoint you can share any case studies or uh, any use cases which you have developed where both 
uh, experience was uh, taken care of like you know network optimization as well as security yeah i think when when customers derive the most value from infoblox is when they think okay. when they break the silos and think across the the networking uh, the, the networking team and the security team. So we had this uh, very interesting deployment uh, with, a, with a global IT services provider. Okay. Uh, I think closer, close to 200,000 uh, employees. And uh, the way they started out with Infoblox was they deployed Infoblox as a, as a DDI layer to just get their core network services up and running. And then they said, look, I can through DNS, I'm getting this this unique visibility, so I'm going to use DNS as my foundational layer of security. Um, so to filter out most of the known malware CNC communication. And what they are doing now is they're basically saying, look, to me, Infoblox is my network source of truth. Everything that I want to know about an IP address, I'm going to get from Infoblox. I'm going to integrate Infoblox into my security operations stack. So we are integrated into their SIEM system, we are integrated into their threat intel uh, feed providers, we are integrated into their source systems. Mm -hmm. So when they now detect an IP address, a malicious IP address from any of their security solutions uh, in their SIM platform, the first thing that happens is there is a query to Infoblox to get everything we know about this IP address. What was the MAC address associated with this device? Who was the user logged in? Uh, do, how much do we know in terms of fingerprinting and discovery around this device? That information is fed into their source system, so now they can prioritize what alerts mm. they want to go after and, 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 and prioritize the remediation that they need to, uh, to, to orchestrate. So that is a great example of bridging across networking and security and taking the, a platform that you have and, and leveraging across both use cases. Uh, that's really great and I think 200k is a big number when you the talk about features. the implementation. But uh, for the you know security leaders who are watching us right now, how you think uh, the roadmap of DNS security or the DDI technology, what do you like to tell them? Look, I think we are going to continue to do more uh, in this space uh, to bring more value to you. So one of the questions we keep getting asked is, what is the return on investment on this, on this, on this platform? Um, the first thing that happens when your security operations folks go to an alert is, okay, I need to now understand what I, everything I can about this IP address. So our, from a roadmap standpoint, and some of this is already in place, we will give you everything we know about that IP address so you can now automate the gathering of that information in your security operations workflows. And uh, we have done some work uh, on what is the, the true value that you can get out of that. 34% uh, reduction in the, the security operations cycles, right? So the amount of time your security operations team spends on a given alert, 34% reduction. Uh, if you look at your security stack, uh, we can offload your firewalls and your web proxies. So there is a big benefit from an ROI perspective because your security stack is further optimized. Um, so, so again, the, the first, I, I'm not answering your question directly, but I, I do want to address the ROI question sure. because uh, that comes up again and again. Uh -huh. uh, Forrester had done a study of customers that had deployed DNS security, and the ROI has been 250% or so over a three-year period, right? mm -hmm. uh, a six-month payback. Okay. Now I'll come back to your question in terms of roadmap. So we are doing all this interesting stuff around taking all the data and driving a lot of analytics around that data so we can provide you very precise insights of mm -hmm. what might be happening in your infrastructure. Uh, I also believe in a layered architecture when it comes to security. So if I can take care of providing you everything that you need to know around an IP address and, and provide that to your SIM system, again, it just makes your life easier as a, as a CISO or your security operations team's life easier when they are trying to manage the, the workflows. We are also taking some of this intelligence and, and building a data plane product that will allow you to do interesting context-aware policy-based forwarding in your infrastructure. So stay tuned. There is a lot of interesting th things happening in terms of 
enabling context-aware networking with all the context and all the contextual information Infoblox has in our DDI infrastructure. Sure, thank you, Thanaya. I think it was really a nice talking to you and knowing you, your experience, and it, the session was quite insightful. And as Kanaya mentioned, stay tuned. We are coming up with more and more valuable information. And thank you for watching, and uh, let's meet in the next video. Gaurav. Thank you, Kanaya. Thank you, Gaurav. Pleasure. Thank you.